So there's actually, in this summary of the law, sort of three commands. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves, which means we need to love both neighbor and self. In this sort of triangle, we have love of God at the top. And if we only love ourselves and not God, then that's really idolatry. And if we, or if we don't love God but only ourselves, if we don't love our neighbor and only ourselves, that's really narcissism. And if we love our neighbor but don't love ourselves, that's really self loathing. So it is important that we love God fully and we love our neighbor as ourself. And this love is not sort of a tingly emotion or something that we would often read about in a greeting card, but it is a depth of relationship. It is an awareness and seeing of, of God, the other, or ourself, as God sees us as God created others and ourselves. And it is not only a depth of awareness, but it is an awareness that leads to action. It leads us to act in particular ways in which we demonstrate care for the other, care for ourself, gratitude to God for all that God has offered us. Now, this awareness and action really is one that sort of, there's a dynamic. And, and we see it in the life that Jesus modeled for us. For in the Gospels, if you were to read them, start to, one, start to finish. Not only do you have all of Jesus' actions, the miracles and the teaching, but as soon as he completes something great, he always withdraws. We'll read a little sentence where it says, and Jesus withdrew to go up to the mountainside. Jesus went away with a couple of his disciples to pray. Jesus went into the garden to pray. And all those times that Jesus is going away to pray come between great acts. It is the place where Jesus refuels, reconnects with God, becomes strengthened and more aware in the moment of the relationship between God and himself that empowers and energizes him and transforms him to go back out to act again, to teach again, to lead, to heal, to restore, to reconcile. That is the balance that you and I need to have in our life. How is it that we go from, from acting to withdrawing to connect to God? Where is it that you and I pull back from all the busyness of our life? There's always something we can do. But where do you and I say, wait? Where do we take the time to connect with God? And that connection, in, in part, is as we're often good at doing, saying, dear God, I need help. Dear God, this hurts. Dear God, I messed up. But prayer is also about giving thanks to God. It is being aware of what God is doing and express our gratitude. To say thank you to God for the way that God has gifted us, God has blessed us, God has empowered us, God is present in our life. And often we can sometimes get sort of out of balance between asking God to help and thanking God. And so it's one of the things that we've sort of adjusted in the prayers of the people that you'll see this morning and moving forward. Not only do we have sort of the, 
cycle of, uh, or the intercessory prayer list for those people that were asking God's healing, but also prayers of thanksgiving to make sure that we as a corporate community on Sunday morning are saying thank you to God. And hopes that will inspire us individually as we go from this place. And we take our time of prayer to not only to ask for God's help, but to give thanks to God for what God is doing already. Now, this awareness and action is not only about between God and us, but also with others. And one of the things that's interesting, I heard uh, uh, an image used a while back, to imagine a wagon wheel where God is the hub of the wagon wheel. And each one of us Everyone whose paths we cross, everyone who is alive, represents one spoke of the wheel. And so, as we work to grow closer in awareness and action in loving God, what will happen simultaneously is we grow closer to one another. Right? As the wagon wheel, the spokes get closer. So not only when we also work to get closer to one another, we will also be getting closer to God. Now notice that uh, as you travel down the wagon wheel, we're not only talking about getting closer to those people um, who are near us in the wagon wheel, those people who are like us, those people who are family, those people who uh, think like we do, but we're also getting closer to the spoke on the absolute other side of the wagon wheel. We are drawing closer in awareness and action and love to those who have hurt us, those who don't think like we do, those who don't look like we do, those who we don't understand, those who are different. Now, this, this love, again, this love of the neighbor as ourself is not about do what they want, but it's about seeing them as God sees them. Do we see those who we are in disagreement with and those who have hurt us as children of God? Do we find a way and a place within our heart and within our day to pray that God might bless them that God's Spirit might work in them and through them to bring healing and wholeness to themselves and to those around them. And we are we willing to make ourselves available that God might work through us in that process. God desires us to be the people whom he has created, to live into our full potential. And to live into that full potential is to be one who lives out these commands to love God and neighbor and self. So on this day, as we gather in this holy place, may we take time in our prayers corporately and individually Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for the ways that God is present in our life. May we look around this room and give thanks for one another and the ways that God is present in those of us here. And having done that, may we go out into the world to love our neighbor as ourself, and in so doing, to love God.